Hey, before you hang up, say this. Sure. This is Steve Pavlina, and you're listening to Vroom Vroom Veer. Do you want me to say it like that? <laughs> you say it, say it how Steve says it. Okay. This is Steve Pavlina, and you are listening to Vroom Vroom Veer. Perfect. Good. There Thanks, you go. brother. <laughs> Later. Okay. All right. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Are you ready to thoughtfully steer away from your revved up, frenzied, and far too often scripted life? Then welcome to Vroom Vroom Veer with Jeff Smith, where he guides you down the road differently traveled by sharing unique experiences with guests who have managed to shift away from a life stuck on cruise control and veered their way into a more authentic and fulfilling one in all sorts of interesting and kind of remarkable ways. Get ready to Vroom Vroom Veer with your differently traveled road chauffeur, Jeff Smith. DJ Shree, thank you so much for being on Vroom Vroom Veer and welcome to the show. How's it going? Jeff, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So we know what you got going on. You're teaching other folks to get their DJ mobile business going on, basically. Um, and you, you teach folks at mobiledjtips.com. Uh, talk a little mm -hmm. bit about what you got going on there today. Yeah, thanks a lot for, um, you know, the great introduction. And yeah, exactly. You know, basically when it comes down to it, a lot of people ask me, what is a DJ, right? Yeah. Uh, well, we don't know, even have Ds of... anymore, right? We have Js, <laughs> but we don't have Ds anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. We're, I'm good. We're going to have fun today. We're going to yes. have fun. Yeah. So um, There yeah, used to you be know... these things called Ds. <laughs> <laughs> That was just the J's. That was just the J's. Right, right. <laughs> so it's, it's you know, mainly what it comes down to is a lot of people have passion for music, right? A lot sure. of people can play music. They, not, they might not be able to play an instrument, but they know they have good selection in music. They can probably learn how to mix, basically. And they know how to keep a party going, right? A lot of people mm. are in the cars and they're mm -hmm. picking music off a playlist or, you know, even at a house party, they're the ones that have to plug in their laptop or something. So what I wanted to do is, and the reason why I focus on a mobile DJ business is it's an entry point, right? A lot of people go to these concerts or nightclubs and they see the DJ on a high stage and they're like, I would love to do that, but I don't know how to get there. Right. So, well, that's not where you start. Exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to give them, well, it, it is, you know, and, um, you know, there, there's steps, right? And uh, the best way to get some publicity and start making money and honestly pay off the initial equipment mm. that you need to invest in is, you know, doing some uh, mobile gigs, you know, going out to weddings, birthday parties, corporate events. And of course, there's a building process. And here at Mobile DJ Tips, we help out all different types of DJs, you know, from the single operators, which is just one guy or a woman uh, going out there doing these events or, you know, scaled out businesses that are more multi-operational, have different employees, contractors underneath them and, wow. you know, doing all right, different right. types of events. But um, what Mobile DJ Tips really aspires to do is even if your, your passion is not in music, you know, my podcast, right, Mobile DJ Tips, if you ever listen to it, it's all about showing people how to take their passion and monetize that in today's world, right? Oh, wow. Online marketing and social media, like so many different things. And the topics are very uh, translatable to different industries. So a lot of different things that we can dive into. Cool. Well, let's go back in time uh, and talk a little bit about like what you were like when you were younger. I know you grew mm -hmm. up uh, out there in the East Coast. What, what What's your earliest childhood memory? I always like, that's a good question. <laughs> I know the it answer is. for me. Yeah. So what's, mm -hmm. what's the youngest memory you can remember? How mm -hmm. old were you? What was going on? It doesn't have to be really crystal clear, but. Mm -hmm. So I love this question, by the way. Okay. Um, so probably I think the earliest memory, and I think a little bit has been informed by like what my parents have told me, of course, and other people. Yeah. But uh, I think you had Ace Chapman on your show and he was talking right. about something, how he was like a young entrepreneur, like, you know, ever since he was growing up. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, you know, not to just relate myself to one of the greats like him, but, um, you know, when I was younger, I was actually making a newspaper and I was only like eight. It was ridiculous. Wow. Like I would, I, it was really ridiculous. Like I can't make this up. I hope I can find some copies one day. Uh, but um, yeah, I would just write up stories within my family, and uh, <laughs> it was like a TMZ kind of thing. Okay. Oh wow! So you were going it for was, the dirt. <laughs> well, it was really sad, but you know, I maybe at a young age I found out what sells. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. And uh, you know, I was like eight years old, and it wasn't dirt. It was more like you know, oh hey, you know, this person just got a job, or this person this, and you know, it was, it was just like more of like what's going on in my family. I had no clue what the you know world was going, you know, what was going on in the world. But you, you and, were um, keyed into what was going on in the house. 
in the family in exactly the family. <laughs> so um wow. yeah man i'm indian so you know we <laughs> so we have that background behind us and yeah we just published a newspaper and it was like really based like a word doc document i remember and um like it was it was so bad so so bad but um you know my dad you know would help me out and then we would go out and try to sell it for like a dollar to like my family members and i'm like oh, oh wow. hey you should check this out because your name's in it yeah 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 <laughs> and, you should um, read this but yeah that's one of my earliest memories yeah <laughs> that's fun Wow. So, but then that, that, that sort of like says what sort of personality you've got. You're not shy and you're kind of got that, uh, what do they call that? That entrepreneurial spirit when you're eight. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cause my family, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like it really, I, now, now it's such a label, like, you know, now we're, you know, entrepreneurs so glamorized and now it's like, Oh, you know, entrepreneur, personality type that's mm -hmm. like a thing now yeah but um yeah i guess like in retrospect i never thought about it that way but yeah i guess it's entrepreneurial uh, spirit probably got it from my family though yeah you know if uh, i think a lot of it probably comes from your family environment you know like my but my dad worked in a factory and my mom she didn't really have a whole lot of jobs she worked at home mostly you know kind of mm -hmm. like a stay-at-home mom and mm -hmm. uh so you know no entrepreneurs, not even in my um, in my extended family. Well, I guess there was kind of like my 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 dad's my dad's my dad's dad and mom. They had a grocery store, so they were entrepreneurs. And then my oh yeah, my mom's brother had a, a furniture store, and he was a carpenter. Wow. But yeah, but the, you know, <clears throat> for the most part, I didn't see those folks that much, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but anyway. Not a whole did lot you ever of help out? Well, did you ever I help did. out? I'm curious now. Did, did you ever help out in the store? Or I did. I mean, you know what I okay. did? Uh, my dad and I, um, we picked up. This was like a tiny mom and pop little sort of grocery store from the past. See, so they don't even exist anymore. You, well, you <laughs> see a couple around in the really? city. You still Do see they? a couple around. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. In Midtown, you definitely see some. This yeah. was like a big deal. I like that. Like, it, it was sort of like the store with a house attached. So they lived mm -hmm. where the store was. You know, and they had like, just like, you know, like one aisle and a counter, you know, and then in the back they had like, uh, meat and, a, and, a, mm -hmm. and a, they could cut meat and stuff like that. So it was like just a tiny little market, you know, mm -hmm. um, classic. That's so classic, man. I mean, I bet you probably had like some of the most loyal customers too, like coming in every yeah, day, picking yeah, up yeah. like fresh, you know, fresh I stuff. So that's there awesome. I for a while. Um, I worked there and, and I learned how to use the, the machine a little bit. Uh, and then mm -hmm. my dad and I went and picked up their, um, whatever it was, weekly or biweekly order from the, mm -hmm. the grocery distribution point, you know, and they hated us. <laughs> Because the order was so <laughs> tiny. <laughs> you know, they were like, oh, okay. I had to pick that. <laughs> you know, they had to go all the way over to get three things, you know. I was like, oh, this is the worst. <laughs> anyway. So. Hey, we all start somewhere. Though. That's that's really cool. So from a very young age, you started seeing that whole world. So that's good. Well, yeah. Yeah. At least there was like the I could see what whole, wholesale retail was, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. The distribution channel, like yeah. how to get it from A to B. I mean, right, I think right. all these little, it's little, little things, right? Like, I feel like when right. we were that age, we didn't think about all these things. But now right. in like retrospect, right. like, now oh, wow, that was actually a unique experience. Right, right, right. right. So talk a little bit about what uh, high school was like for you. What could, what sort of kid were you in high school? I know you were already DJing, right? When you were yep, in high school. That's correct. And when that's did correct. you start DJing? In middle school? Uh, yeah, so it was very early. So the only reason I got into DJing and partially the reason I'm so motivated to tell other people, like teach other people is it's actually been a family business to a certain extent. Like I have four okay. first cousins and they're all DJs. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so I like to tell people I was actually born in the DJ booth, like at the age of 12, like I was already like, you know, going around with them, lifting speakers for them, lifting turntables. And if you ever listen to lifting right. a turntable, it's pretty heavy, okay. you know, like yeah, yeah. I was 12 years old and I'm like lifting all this stuff for them, like breaking my back. But, um, you know, that's, you know, you got to start somewhere. And, um, yeah, I was, I was 12 years old, middle school probably. And, um, you know, schlepping around and high school, I was still DJing. I definitely didn't have like a normal, uh, upbringing, even in college. Cause most of the time, you know, on weekends, people would go out or, you know, party or go to movies. Like I never working. really watched movies. <laughs> I was actually working. Yeah. That's like good. honestly I was. Yeah. And, um, I honestly was. You never, like, I can't you never even... had any fun. Wow. Well, <laughs> well, DJing, DJing, DJing was my fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is yeah, like, Cause you're in a was, party. 
it's 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 the most intoxicating feeling for me. Like I could not walk away from it. Like even if I walk, like you know, much credit to all different types of you know experiences. Like I love going out. Like nowadays, I, you know, I do normal things now. Right, right. <laughs> but at some um, point, each you realize is so much fun. Yeah, yeah right. I get it. <laughs> like it's just so intoxicating. Like you know, playing. You know, just imagine playing a song. Like at the most bare bones. Like let's not even worry about scratching, mixing, like all this crazy stuff. Just imagine pressing play and looking up, and you see like five hundred people just like their faces light up, and you did that. Like you you. <laughs> Push, you literally pushed a button and you yeah. made people's faces like their emotions change. Like you can't, you know, that's like so direct and it's like it's like a god feeling. It's crazy, man. No, I get it. I get it. Yes, <laughs> it's, crazy, it's intoxicating. So. You 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 nailed it. Now you know, <laughs> I I can I can track my. I did like mm, you know maybe six DJ events as as a as a kid, right in like high wow. school, right? Maybe right, and these were sort of like family events with like. A home stereo. <laughs> hey, that, that, that counts. You're a and, DJ, man. That, that yeah, counts. I know. I know. You know, it was like, you know, somebody's wedding or somebody's this or somebody's that. And it was in a rented place, you know. And it's like, who's doing the music? Jeff will play records. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? This is awesome, man. This is really cool. Yeah. So you had so you had a collection of records, though. You did you were uh, collecting? Or you your know, was, or? Uh, they weren't my records, I don't think, because I'm okay. not a collector. <laughs> Okay. I figured that out about me. They were somebody else's records. They, whoever, (laughs) yeah, they, uh, uh, so it wasn't even, it wasn't even my, they just figured, okay, he's got that sort of like MC personality. So there was Uh, also a mic there. So I was more an MC that played records than a true DJ. You know, um, I never really got a jolt out of playing a record that everybody liked. Uh, really, my method was somebody else was telling me what to play. So I wasn't necessarily, <laughs> I was like DJ, you were the hype, man. I was DJ labor. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody else was actually what? doing the creativity and, oh. and I was just putting the record on and then dropping no, no, the needle. No, no. <laughs> don't, don't be too humble. No, don't be really. too humble. No, I'm sure really. you got on the mic and you hyped it up. Oh, I did. You, I did. I need MC. everybody on the floor and doing I did all that. MC. That's, now hey, that I'll take, I'll that take counts. credit for MC because I liked it and I did it. You know, that was fun being on the mic and, and, you know, going, what up, what up, what up? I didn't say that, but whatever the eighties version of that was. <laughs> um, oh, man. yeah, I That's did that awesome. and I enjoyed it. But, uh, as far as like, I never really had a feel for, I like listening to music, but as far as like, you know what you're talking about, about there's a bunch of people dancing and, and now I'm going to get a vibe of what I think the mood is asking for next. Never mm-hmm. really got, <laughs> never, that's never. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it's not, I don't think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I never even knew that was a thing. I just thought people just got up there and like played records. <laughs> mm-hmm. So no, it, and that's it the crazy thing. thing though, it is Jeff. a thing. Well, yeah. Well, the, well, the crazy part about what you're talking about is DJing wasn't a thing until very recently, actually. Like, is that right? I would say 20 to 30, yeah, 20 to 30 years, I would say, like, relatively new. Like, hip hop was, you know, hip hop birth DJing, but at the time, it wasn't really. I don't know. It wasn't exactly formalized. You know, we're talking about how entrepreneurship is becoming more formalized now. And now it's right. Same thing with DJing. Like it's becoming a lot more formalized nowadays. And um, even in the past decade or two, it, it wasn't it wasn't like, OK, like I remember when I used to go out with my cousins and they were doing these events, they would get paid like a couple hundred bucks. But then the people wouldn't really know what a DJ was. They wouldn't know that, oh, they do this, this and this. Like now there's now it's completely changed. Now there's like an oh, expectation. It's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a huge deal. Like, you know, when you hire a DJ, like, uh, you know, I don't know if you're married, but like, you know, when people hire wedding DJs, it's like crazy. You know, now they want like platinum events. Like they want a nightclub in a banquet hall. Like it's like, right. you know, it's, it's crazy. Right. Platinum a, 16s. Right. Like it's, right. It's, it's go complete. The whole thing has changed. It's so not just your, no your cousin that plays records anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you're right. Because I, a um, couple years ago, it's been quite a few years ago, maybe like eight, 10 years ago. I don't know. But uh, in recent memory, I was going to somebody's house in uh, Tucson, and a friend of theirs that I didn't really know that well, but you know, we were in town and there was a party, so we went. Mm-hmm. Like that family w- had all the lights and the DJ equipment and the whoop whoop and the fog machine, the whole deal <laughs> in a house. I was like, 
this is really a thing. And it was yeah. awesome. You know, it really, especially the lights in the fog, I was like, holy crap. It completely <laughs> changes a house into what you're saying. It's like, yeah. uh, it, now it's a nightclub. I'm like, wow. Yeah, it's a good yeah. vibe, man. It's a good vibe. <laughs> so let's let's walk through. Um, so what was what was life like for you in college? What did you study first? Because we know what you did. <laughs> you were DJ. Yeah. But what were you there? What were you there studying? So I'm a big proponent of college. You know, I don't know how many young listeners you have, but um, you know, I'm a big proponent of college. I was actually just recently on like a college podcast, okay. um, just speaking to like you know a lot of teenagers because. You know, I think the uniqueness is nowadays create, you know, creative arts, you know, DJing is labeled creative arts, whatever you want to call that, you know, painting, music, whatever. It's not really taught. Podcasting. That's not really taught, right? Like these are creative arts and you can make a business from it, but that's not really taught in college. And that's okay. So I think that there's a lot of controversy around that. And I'm not sure what your take on it is, but my thinking is this, you know, in college, I was definitely studying. Like I was, I was an econ and public health double major and, um. Yeah, like I was definitely like, you know, studying and just trying, you know, just trying to make the best of myself, like whatever I could and applying myself. Like, I'm not saying I got A's. Some It was honestly B's and C's <laughs> right. um, because, you know, like my direction yeah, you were was working I was, too. Yeah, well, I was DJing, you know, it's hard right. to, you know, DJ at night and then wake up and go to class and expect to get an A on the exam. You know what I mean? That's right. not going to happen. Right. right. But um, right. like it could happen <laughs> if you're really good. But, um, you know, I'm I'm just a normal person. So. You know, I was econ public health and I'm a big proponent of college, you know, because even though I particularly don't work with my current majors, like, you know, with my education, it teaches you so much. Yeah. But I think it teaches you so much on uh, different things, like the dynamic, like a lot of people right now, there's a controversy. I'm sure you're aware, like in the entrepreneurial world, like, oh, if you're going to become an entrepreneur and you have all these side skill sets, then do you need to go to college? And I always say yes, because you know, even if you're having that question in your head, if you have that question in your head, you should probably go to college right? because college is for you because college will help you shape and grow in so many other ways. Like it's outside of what professor you meet or what class you take or what major you do. It's about the social growth that happens. You know, you get to see all these different people hang out with people that are in like what, what what age is it? It's like 17 to 21 or something or 18 to 22, whatever it is. And it's like a critical growth period, right? And you get to see how people change and you know, there's so many things going on in college. It's so many different dynamics. So and it's I always, you know, way I'm a big more than just what's going on in the classroom. Yeah. Mm. Right. So much so, so much so. Like yeah. I can't say that. Like all of my experiences right now, you know, it taught me about people more than anything else. It taught me how people are. You know, for good, for better or for worse. You know, it it taught me about people's personalities and you know how to talk to different people. Talk to you know different, um, like interest, like, you know, when you're in college, there's different clubs and organizations. And, you know, one of the first things you do in college is go out to like one of these fairs, right? And you see all these different clubs and orgs. That's not a normal, like in a day to day life, like when you're an adult, you don't see those things. You don't, you know, you don't have some like, you know, you don't have some guy. He's like, yeah, man, I love playing hacky sack all day. Like, that's not normal. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, that's, I mean, I love playing hacky sack too. Right. Yeah. Well, I I, don't get me wrong. I like playing hacky sack too. That's why I thought of that. But, um, I actually have a hacky sack on my table, but, um, you know, like I, when I used to go to college, like you walk into one of these fairs and you see like, you know, guys just doing all these different things, you know, or, you know, I keep saying guys, but, you know, guys and girls doing all these different types of things. So, you know, that's a great environment to be in. So I'm a big proponent of college. So I'm glad you brought that up. Well, you know, I never, I, let's see here. I was all signed up to go to community college when I was 18, 17, 18, after I graduated Mm -hmm. uh, high school. And then I I joined the Air Force instead. (laughs) I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. So how was, I, mean, I can't even imagine. <laughs> how was that? Oh, you know, the thing, the thing about it is, is, um, obviously it's different than being a civilian, but it being, in the, being the, <laughs> to say the least. Yes. Yeah. Being, being in the air force is in being now saying it, it is the military, obviously, but as far as military services go, it's the most civilian like, mm. Right. So there Mm -hmm. are things it is definitely military and different than being a civilian lifestyle wise. But I still it's very civilian esque. You know, you know, I would say 80 percent of of my life is very much just like somebody that had an office job because I did (laughs) I.T., you know, Mm -hmm. so I always had a desk and I always went to an office, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, So most of my life was just very civilian like now. Granted, I was mm. doing it in interesting and exotic places. 
<laughs> and I would occasionally yeah, I saw go that. to like deserty places, you know, right. So, but yeah, it, I'm glad I did that, you know. So that means that my college was stretched out. Like it was kind of like how to do a four year degree in about 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> so every base for the longest time, I was doing like a class or here or there, you know. Um, huh. But that was, it was, it was, it, I, it was fun. The whole yes. 20 years was, you know, ups and downs, shitty and fun, shitty and fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But overall, and then I finished my, my college, my uh, bachelor's degree after I retired in a, like a year oh. and a half. <laughs> well, good for you, man. Good for you. Kudos to you. Right. That's a lot of, you know, that it, takes a lot of guts. Honestly, that takes a lot of guts. So kudos. It was good times. Yeah. That's that's awesome, man. That that takes a lot of determination. So that's awesome. I mean, I'm not surprised, obviously. You're a go-getter, but that's awesome, man. Much kudos to you that you finished it. So let's talk about when you decided to go out and get a job, because that is always uh, bears good fruit in far as the uh, uh, kind of moments. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, what yeah. sort of job did you get, you know? Uh, so funny enough, you said IT. Um, I was in IT. Right. Um I was a release manager, and um, right, right. so uh, you know the best way to put release management, it's more of like a software. So it was part of a software company, and what they do is they release updates. You know, there's always you know on your phone you always have a different update or something. Um, you know, a lot of different things going on. You know, firmware updates, security updates, you know, software updates, you know, right. fancy updates just to change the color of the background because you know that's how it rolls. You know, when Instagram <laughs> changes the logo. Like, right. you know, that, that's an update, right? Like when Instagram, sure. Instagram used to be a brown and what brown and beige like logo and mm-hmm. they changed everything to be purple, right? Like to bring that down, like that's an update. So that's what a release man, like there was a release manager behind that that said, okay, we need to roll this out one day that on every single phone in America or the world actually, that the logo will change overnight. And yeah. so that's a release manager. They take care of that one rolled out wow. overnight. <laughs> Holy cow. Yikes is right. <laughs> Yikes is right. It was very stressful, man. That is, because there's <laughs> so, many, so many things can go wrong. Oh, my goodness. It, and they do. And that's yeah, why, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they do. So, you know, that's why the, the job is there. But, um, you know, much kudos to all the release managers. But, um, you know, like talking about Vroom Vroom Beer, you know, that was where I was like. That was your I was brooming. going. Yeah. Yeah, I was going. I was going in. And like, it was a good job. You know, obviously, you know, when you're working hard and you're working a lot of hours, you know, the compensation should also be there. But, um, you know, much kudos to all the release managers. But I obviously I had to veer out of that because in my heart of hearts, I knew that my passion is music. You know, I've been DJing literally my whole life. And then, um, you know, much kudos, like, trust me, much kudos to everyone like hustling like that. Like, I, I definitely respect corporate life and all that, you know, but my passion, unfortunately, like, I don't know why, but I kept like getting dragged out. Like, you know, I would, I would be working on a release and in my heart, I'm like, you know what? Something saying like, I would, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, honestly, yeah. I need to be making people happy. You know, I need yeah. to go play music. Like, you know, I play drums as well. So like, you know, I need to, I need to express myself musically. And that was like my inner like turmoil. <laughs> no, I get so, it. Um, I get it. You know, it was it was an issue. It was honestly an issue. I wish I could be content, but um, much kudos to all the release managers. And then I obviously veered and, um, you know, decided, hey, I'm going to not only go back into DJing where I am today. Uh, but switch it up and teach other people, you know, put other people on this game because, you know, what attracts me to DJing and music in general is I love making people happy. Like whatever I can do, I love making people happy. And right. particularly my skill set is music. You know, I'm not a great dancer, but I can, you know, make <laughs> other people dance. We have that in common. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit and, and talk about that moment that you were in your job and, mm-hmm. and you had that aha about, I got to get out of here. How did that, how did that shape out? I think there's a good story there or maybe two. <laughs> I don't know. At least what? Uh, so, uh, I did, uh, I did a lot of releases, you know, for the company, which will be unnamed, but, uh, it was That's definitely fine. one of those, it was one of those, uh, bigger companies. It was a fortune 20 company and they were pushing and hauling software, like nobody's business sure. and releases were happening very frequently. So it was definitely a great very environment, you know, stress, very motivated. Though. Yeah. High stress, uh, you know, like it, it's one of those, it's kind of like working on Wall Street. Like I always hear, you know, if you've ever seen Wolf of Wall Street, like it's very high stress, high demanding, but then, you know, high fun. Like, you know, you get a, when something ha- works and you're like, oh, wow, this is like really fun. And then people come back to you and like, oh, this worked perfectly. Good job. So it's like, you know, high stress, but also high reward. Okay. So um, it was, it was a little bit of both. Like I really respect the industry. I really do. I can't say that enough. Sure. But um, 
you know, just like releases, you know, releases happen overnight, you know, one night we pick a night and we just go with it. And just like that, I, you know, I, uh, and I don't recommend anybody else do this, but one day I went into work and I said, you know what, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. So, uh, I talked to my boss, we had a meeting and, uh, like literally it's funny. I'm replaying this in my head since you asked, but, uh, yeah, there was like six people in the meeting and slowly everyone's like leaving. And there was actually one guy who kept lingering. Like, you know, there's always that one guy in the office, like the guy that just wants to like, you know, be a brown noser to the boss. And he just keeps, <laughs> at, like, you know, like he just keeps talking to the boss and I'm just yeah. sitting there like with my and hands you're, crossed. And you're I'm, like, waiting you know, your turn here yeah. to quit my job. Yes. Like yeah. I'm waiting to go tell her that I'm going to leave today. And he's right. just there like, Oh, yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, blah, blah. yeah. Yeah. Sucking <laughs> up and brown nosing. Exactly. Right, right. Lovely. Exactly. This guy, and this guy's just going off and I'm like, oh my God, what is going on here? And, but actually it worked out, you know, I think things work out for the best because it gave me a little bit more time to, you know, uh, you know, find my, uh, you know, find my confidence to say, Hey, am I going to do this or not? And as he's, so, you know, the situation is it's an empty conference room, right? A big table in the middle. There's my boss sitting on one side. There's this guy that keeps, you know, stroking her ego yeah. and I'm sitting there and I'm like, mm, am I really going to quit this job? And at the same time, like the more he kept talking, the more affirming it was to me that I didn't <laughs> want to become like him. <laughs> so it's funny how That's things great. work out, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like the more he keeps talking, yeah, I don't want to be that guy. And it was like more motivating, you know, cause wow. that was like an extreme example of someone that's been in the world too long, yeah. you know? And, um, that was like really extreme. Obviously not everyone's like that. Uh, he's an odd case, but, um, right, uh, right. I'm friends with him by the way, but <laughs> he's, he's good now. But, uh, but yeah, so anyway, uh, you know, he's just stroking her ego and I'm like, okay, eventually he decides to get up and leave. And my boss, obviously, you know, the meeting ended like 30 minutes ago and this guy just wasted all her time. So she's wow. like, Hey, Shri, did you need anything? I'm going to get going. I have something else to do. And she's, she's already walking out the door. Cause you know, obviously this guy wasted all her time and I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, again, I don't want to name her name, but I'm like, Hey, uh, do you mind if I could just get two minutes of your time? She's like, yeah, sure. Shri, like, what's up? What's on your mind? And, uh, we sat down. I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, I apologize. I respect everything you've done for me. You know, you've taught me a lot. This company has given me more than I can ever, you know, repay. But, um, you know, just to let you know, I, I have uh, talked to my coworkers. They're going to be picking up some of my, uh, you know, activities. But uh, today will be my last day and I'll be leaving uh, today. Wow. No, no <laughs> yeah. notice. That's great. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, from her side, like I understand what she's worried about and, you know, release management, we do this as a team. So like I already talked to like, I'm very, you know, I was very good with my team members because obviously we've been through like a lot of stuff together. So mm -hmm. I told them like, Hey guys, you know, this is what's going on and today is going to be my day. And uh, when I leave, I want you guys to do X, Y, and Z. And it's, a, you know, the release management's a team. So yeah. it was, it's very much easily picked up. You know, they right. like it's the, the profession is made such that others, others, uh, other people can pick it up. You know, obviously yeah. the thing can't die overnight. Right. It can't be so, personality uh, dependent. Oh, Shri got sick today. We can't do our release. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, no. my God. That would, that would have been on the headlines. The stock would have dropped. Imagine if I made right. the stock drop. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like dropping the mic, but in a bad way. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> That's a first. I've never heard that. Nice. Nice one. <laughs> That's a good one. I dropped the mic. Yeah. But, you did drop but, the mic on your boss. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so what did that feel like in the moment? Were you like freaking out when you were doing that little speech about today's my last day and you know, oh, where, where, where were you in your head? What did that feel like? I was like? sweating bullets. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's she crazy. She is a very powerful woman. And, yeah. uh, did she try to talk you out of it? That's uh, very professionally, very yes. professionally, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. you know, just her personality. She was like, Shree, um, I'm just wondering. And, you know, Have I you totally really like, thought about this. <laughs> 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 Literally, yes, she did ask me that. She's like, have you, she's like, Shree, are you okay? Like, I know you've not been sleeping. Like, are you okay? Right, and I'm like, right. I don't know. Trust me. Like, I'm good. I had my cup of coffee. Like, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm actually saying this because, you know, uh, you know, I, I told her like, Hey, look, you know, a lot of times, you know, people don't understand that sometimes some you might have a bigger calling and that's okay like you know not everyone is thinking like that and that's okay right like the what would society be if everyone's running around worrying about their passion but um like <laughs> what would it be like it'd be, it'd be chaos right and um i told her i'm like i just i just kept it real with her like i'm just a real person i told her i'm like hey, look you know i have nothing against you you've been amazing this company is amazing the team is amazing but i made sure that my coworkers will take over like what needs to happen x y and z like nothing's gonna ha like there's no hitch in that yeah. trust me right and um well, it's honestly just like i'm you know internally it was it's, it's not you it's me 
<laughs> Yo, man, you're killing me right now. You're killing me with all these. <laughs> it's not you. It's me. I just... It really was though. It really was. And um... I, when I quit, I quit my job in uh, 2000, the end of 2010, right? And 100%. and this was like a uh, a really high paying, do nothing job relative to military service. Okay. And it was just sucking my soul out. I mean, I, if I just thought about going to that cube, it made my, mm-hmm. my head hurt, you know, that, mm-hmm. that sort of feeling. Been there. Been there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but when I, when I finally basically sold the idea on my, to my wife that it was time for me to quit, mm-hmm. um, I was just elated. I couldn't, I couldn't get in the office fast enough <laughs> to say, and now, and you, now I went, I did, I did two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Because good. It was that's that's of, how it should be done. It was kind of an out of the blue. Like, please, yeah. Two weeks. Right. And then, you know, so, but for those two weeks, it was like a full court press on trying to get me to stay. It was like, cause I had already transitioned from full time to part time and and I was trying to work out, you know, sort of like work from home deals. So I was okay. trying to massage a stay as much as I was mm-hmm. trying to exit because I really just wanted to be gone. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I realized that it would be cool to have money. <laughs> 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 and, you know, in retrospect, if I could do it all over again, mm-hmm. I would probably do the same thing because now I it, it played okay. out where like... I want to say like less than two years later, the whole thing just folded and collapsed. And, and I went to ha- all the people that were hired to do the similar thing. It was mm-hmm. like right around, um, it was two years after 2008, right? Or three years, basically. So that, that ripple effect in the economy finally hit the government, the federal government. Um, mm-hmm. And, and they, they did a, a spending freeze. Um, so they, they no longer hired new, con- uh, new government folks for many, many years. And then they were trimming the fat on all these, uh, excess contractors. And, mm. uh, I would have been one of them. So max, I would have had, out. yeah, Things another two years. Ways. Yeah. Right. So, but anyway, <laughs> that's an interesting no well, i i completely dig your story man like but like i said i think things always work out in funny ways like you know what for better or for worse like you know i people always say things you know things work out for a reason i like to say things work out for a good reason you know we might not understand right, it right. but you know look in retrospect right two years later you found out that you know this this and this like you know yeah. you might you probably would have gotten fired and you know it's good you know you got a two-year head start doing your entrepreneur thing so right right so so you quit Right. <laughs> and then, yes. and then, well, good news though, is you already knew how to do DJ and MC. Yes. So it wasn't yeah. like you weren't going to eat. You, you, yeah. You were kind of like had, you were like, still doing events. Still... Right. oh, so you were doing yeah. events already. Uh, yes. Yeah. Cause it was, time. you know, okay. 100%. I was always right. doing events and that was, you know, definitely like one, I guess, luxury I had, you know, I was always making money on the side. Right. So all you had to do is uh, just ramp that up. Yeah, it, honestly, yes. Like I, you know, I can't. I'm not gonna, you know, front. Like, yeah, it was, it was a luxury, but I also put in my time, you know, doing it through, you know, middle school, high school, and then of college. No, and I like, get it. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, exactly. Like I literally left, but I knew that I was good financially. Right. Right. So, so walk through the next couple of years. What? How did you decide to start wanting to coach and teach on your mm-hmm. mobiledjtips.com? Mm-hmm. Type situation. So, how did that okay. come to be? So that was about two two and a half years ago. Okay. So uh, you know that's where we are today now. But right, uh, right. yeah, what I did was um, I was DJing. I was going out there doing events. You know, I had people under me. We had our whole business. You know, my my cousins already had a book of business. So my goal was only to expand that. Okay. So what I did was. Um, as soon as I quit my job, I started learning because, you know, all my cousins are much older than me and they've been in this industry. So they're much they're very comfortable. They know their clientele. They know how many events they can get a year, like referrals and all this. So what I did was I started looking into online marketing. OK. And uh, I started listening to, you know, podcasts like yours. And honestly, I love podcasting. Like I'm, I, I was always driving it around for events. Audio. And, Right. <laughs> audio. You can listen to it in the car. And the best part, like I love audio books too, Yeah. but I love podcasts because you can just, it's like 30 minutes and it's like straight wisdom only. Like you get the raw content of what someone is like, right. you know, 
it, it, it's amazing. I love, like, trust me, I love podcasting. It, it really changed my personal life. But, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, yeah, so I was, I was learning about online marketing, social media presence, and how that, how that works. So what I did was I used it for my own business, like my DJ business. And uh, I realized, like, hey, this thing works. You know, when you actually make a nice website and you think about a sales funnel, you know, like right, right. in this world, these things work and they will give you business results. So it was pretty cool. So, um, you know, I, I started off like that, you know, doing advertising on Google AdWords. And then I was like, yo, this thing, actually, there's something to this. And we scaled up, we did our thing. And then I really got to a point where I'm like, okay, I thought about this. I'm like, you know, what, where do I see myself? Like, am I going to be DJing? Am I going to be, you know, getting other DJs to go out for me? Like I've been doing like contractors or like, where do I see myself? Like, what's the long-term trajectory? And, um, I like teaching. I like talking a lot. I think I just like hearing my own voice, but, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, me well, too. Uh, <laughs> it's fun. Well, I think all, pod, that, all that podcasters, podcasters do, I think. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. There, there has to be something there, but, well, um, you know, the thing is with me, I don't know what you're like, but, uh, I get strained if I try to like talk to the mic without another person to talk to. Oh, yes. Same here. Same here. I yeah. like having it, conversations. Like do webinars. Like I do webinars. I have to do live webinars. Like I'm trying to get right. into like this automated thing. And that's a nice little cute sales funnel. But, you know, I what I'm going to do is I'll probably just record a live session and then like automate that one. But right. Yeah. I need to do a live webinar. Like I feed off the energy just like exactly. DJing. I feed off the yeah. energy of the other people. And if it's not so there, I'm, not, I'm a different person. Just talking I mean, to, uh, you know, like a laptop screen and a microphone. I'm boring, <laughs> you know, it's just like, hey, everybody, it's me. Um, hmm. <laughs> There's nobody here I'm talking to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I so uh, yeah, like even on my podcast, I don't do I don't do many solo shows. Like I did one solo show, which is just like a question and answer yeah. with all the listeners. Like they that was like episode I 14. I could probably handle that. Yeah, like, you know, that was that was a little bit good for me. Like, you know, people had uh, left me voicemails online. Mm -hmm. So I would play the voicemail and I would act like it was a conversation. So I was yeah. able to just go off. Yeah, I think but I could handle that. That was the only solo show technically, like when we didn't have an interview. It would be kind of boring, uh, I think, probably, if I did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I could I probably so. get through it. I could probably get through it. Because it's like I'm talking to that person asking the question. Exactly. It's That's not, exactly how it yeah. I would play. I would play the question on my headphones and then just start talking to the mic. Right. But, um, yeah, you asked me, you know, to answer your question, like where, like these two and a half years. So, you know, I went in, I learned online marketing and all these things for my DJ business. And, um, I was like, you know, I like teaching. So I decided to get with a couple of other entertainers. Like I know a lot of people in the industry and, uh, just because, you know, c like connections eventually when you're working and you find out who's, who else is working in it. So I got together with a few different people and we decided, Hey, yeah, let's, let's do this, you know, uh, teaching thing online. So what we did was we created mobile DJ tips, which is, you know, classrooms for different things going on in the DJing world. You know, we have a class on how to talk on the mic, emceeing. We have a class on marketing for DJs. Like literally it's called marketing for DJs.com. We have wow. DMX editing, like lighting for DJs, like all these, there's so many things in the DJ world. So I won't bore you with that, but we created classrooms for each one because, you know, I knew professionals doing this and it was real actionable content because they do this every day. Right. So, um, yeah, we probably we, doesn't exist. Not online it, anyway. Exactly. Yeah, there's there's definitely some some people doing this and you know, much you know, shout out to all my competitors. But um, you know, I <laughs> right. keep it, well I mean we keep it, you know, we keep it, you know, real. Like we keep it very actionable and I think people realize that that right. hey, you know, she's not just this is not textbook knowledge. You know, a lot of the a lot of my competitors unfortunately a little bit um I don't know I don't know when's the last time they DJ'd, let's put it that way. Ah and, right. Um yeah. And, you know, respect to all of them, like, you know, they've done a lot for the industry in their own respect. And, you know, I like I give them all all respect and all kudos. But, um, you know, I'm giving them the real actionable content of what works in, you know, right now we're recording this in 2016. But I'm giving them online marketing tips like what's working today. Like, hey, Facebook changed its algorithm. When you advertise on Facebook, it's a little bit different. When you're using your Instagram, don't forget to tell people to turn on their notifications. You're not going to hit up their, you know, feed yeah. like that. Right. You know, these different tips that, and you know, I don't. And it's changing that, every day. <laughs> It's like being a release manager. <laughs> Say that helped. So much so, so much so, so yeah. much so. And, you know, you're from the IT world. Like, I'm sure you can relate to like it, oh, yeah. that background definitely helps out. Oh, yeah. So you got to give me the story about how you got Oprah Winfrey's DJ on your podcast, because that's that's a pretty good win. 
Yeah, well, uh, her name is uh, Cynthia. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So her name is Cynthia Malloran, uh, better known as DJ Cherish the Love. And, um, you know, much, you know, much credit to her. Like we've had a lot of different DJs like uh, on the podcast. We've had the New Jersey DJ Association through your president. We've had the three year national DJ of the year times winner uh, like Jack Bermeo. He's been on the show. We've had multiple best selling authors, you know, Michael Walter, DJ Michael Walter, DJ Stacy Zeman. So a lot of different influential people. You and of course, Oprah Cannon. Cannon. you got <laughs> <laughs> that would he's a killer MC. He's a killer MC. Right. Say what people will but he's a great mc that's why you know all his shows like while and now is so popular yeah but uh the mc I had skills no right idea, you know until i i heard him talk on um howard stern mtv yeah oh, okay. he was on howard stern a couple times back when howard stern was still on agt so they they were buddies and they hung out occasionally so you know nick cannon was on <clears throat> howard stern's show and talking about djing and i'm like I learned so much. <laughs> I'm like, what? This guy, yeah. he's doing DJ events. I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and he was like, so if he's doing that at his level, he must be making, these gotta be like, you know, five star mm. events. Right. Yes. They're, yeah, easily. They're, yeah. I mean, they're not like somebody's wedding <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> or the if they are a wedding, future. it's like, you know, JLo's wedding or something. Exactly. That literally, like what you just said is so true. And um, they're getting paid, you know, tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars to wow. put on crazy productions. Yeah, yeah, like literally, it's entertainment, right? Like entertainment right. value. But um, what's crazy right now, Jeff, is that everybody needs a DJ and a lot of people forget this. And why I think I like mobile DJing is people need music anywhere, right? Like what is a mobile DJ? What's the difference between a nightclub DJ and a mobile DJ? A nightclub DJ walks into a building that's already equipped with turntables or a mixer and speakers into the wall, and they do their thing. Right. But a mobile DJ brings the speakers with them. So mm, the versatility wow. with mobile DJing is insane. So, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you know the president has a DJ. Of course. You know? Wow. So. Exactly. Like everybody has a DJ. Like you can't make that up because you need sound, right? You need music anywhere. Yeah. Even if you want to set up a microphone, like even if you want to talk like these rallies, these campaigns, mm. I mean, I'm sure somebody with a, you know, music slash DJ background will set up some of that equipment. You have to know like AV stuff and, you know, yeah, a lot yeah. of similar skill sets. So, um, so it's like yeah. part audio engineer, part, uh, MC, part DJ. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So many skill sets all in one. Exactly. And that's why, you know, a lot of people, uh, um, you know, now they're learning more about the, the game, but a uh, mobile DJing, you know, that's why we go with that because w nightclubs are fun and all, but you know, that's very limited. Your t talents and skill sets will only be limited to that building. But once right. you walk out that right, building, right. what are you going to do? Yeah. So, you know, you go to all these music stores and they're selling speakers and all these things. Why? Because there's people, mobile DJs that buy these speakers and then take them anywhere. Like they'll bring it to your house they'll bring it to this place, this place, this place, and they make the party anywhere they go. So you can't, you know. So let me just ask you this because I'm just curious and then we'll, we'll call it a show. Mm -hmm. So sure. when you show up to do your mobile DJ gig, where at whatever event, right? What are you using as your source? Are you using like a phone or a laptop or mm -hmm. an mm -hmm. iPad? What, what, what are you using as your source for your music? Yeah, you can actually use all of the above that you just said. Okay. There's any of those. Um, <laughs> you, you literally can. Right, uh, right. Me personally, uh, I I grew up on turntables, um, so okay. that was always like my go-to. But uh, of course, you try to have to get to you know get with the new technology. So uh, my setup for you know anybody listening or anybody trying to get into the DJ game is I use a uh, Pioneer DDJ SX controller. So it's like a it's like a virtual you know like I'm sure Jeff you've seen uh, turntables. This is like more of like a computerized, uh, like digitized. I've seen uh, one controller. of those. Right, right. Oh, you have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it does like a lot of the same things as a turntable, um, and yeah, like I use that, and it's like a controller. It's like an all-in-one kind of unit. So you're so using that later. to do like your queuing, right? And your and exactly. and your mix kind of thing, and you can and ah, you go uh, like wiki wiki wiki. <laughs> yeah, you got this, man. Yeah, you know. Yes, 
Exactly. Right. Queuing. That's, you know, a lot of people always ask me the basic question. I know you want to wrap up the show, but the basic question is what is, why does the DJ have headphones on? Like, can't he hear the music? The speakers are so loud, you know? And they don't realize that the DJ is actually listening to the next song. He's right. queuing the next right, song. Right. So what you're listening to, he's not listening to. He's listening to, or he or she is listening to the next thing. Well, the trick <laughs> is, is, is you've got one headphone on and then you've got your finger in your other ear. <laughs> I've seen yes, a sir. lot of folks do that, right? <laughs> yeah, you want to yeah, tune you mix out it in. the noise, right, to get the signal. Yeah, I get it. That's amazing. Yeah, DJ, so DJ so Jeff that, Smith, man, you got to put that. <laughs> you know what you're talking about. You clearly do. <laughs> that whole well, I watched the, that dude at the at the Christmas party. So, and I was like, <laughs> there is no record on that turntable. <laughs> <laughs> What is yeah, he doing? Yeah. You know, and he had it plugged <laughs> into his phone. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh, I get it. So now yeah. let me ask you this. Now, does that, so that little, um, your DJ uh, interface, right, with the turntable that just does the queuing. So that interfaces with your audio source, right? So you can bring up another track and it's on a whole nother channel and you're just switching yeah. between the channels. Is that what's going on? Exactly. And so okay. what I do is I have the controller plugged into my laptop. So it's like literally a USB wire. Right. And okay. you plug it directly from the controller to your laptop. Right. And then that unlocks all potential. You can play right. music off your laptop. So right, whatever songs right. you have on your laptop, you can play. Wow. And then you use the mixer to switch. Like, okay, I want to play the song on the left side. And then I want to play the song on the right side. You know, like you can switch it with the, the uh, functions of the channel, like, you know, the channels. Right, right. So you're using... You, you can use the mouse too. You've got that, but then you're yep. also got your uh, your little spin spin cue thing, right? And exactly. That's just sort of like a forward backward kind of <laughs> kind of. <thing. laughs> yeah, that's you know, like it's it's great. Like you know, I love that we're talking about the actual content of DJing, but yeah. yeah, like you know, at the end of the day, it's just a service business, just like any other one, right? Like people. Yeah. Pro, you know, you go out, you get paid for a service, just like, you know, if someone was a consultant or a uh, business coach, you know, right. it's a service, right? People sure. have a skill set. They get paid for how good they are with that skill set and they book clientele like that. So, you know, mainly it's really a service business. I love it. And it sounds like a blast. So good, good on you. <laughs> hey, sounds like you. you're having fun, Shri. Yeah, I'm having fun teaching other people how to get into this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you are at mobiledjtips.com, and, uh, and so if people want to reach out and connect to you, they can do so there. Is there any other ways that folks can reach out and talk to you? Yeah, thank you for having me, Jeff. I mean, this has been a blast talking to you. Um, and uh, yeah, mobiledjtips.com, or uh, check out the iTunes podcast. It's uh, Mobile DJ Tips as well. And uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions about anything, you can shoot me an email. It's uh, Shri, S-H-R. I at mobiledjtips.com. You can't miss us. Cool. This has been a blast, brother. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. Yeah, it's been an honor. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah, take care. Thanks for taking the time to ride along with us on another episode of Vroom Vroom Veer. For podcast info and show notes, be sure to head over to vvveer.com. That's triple V double -E E-R.com. Man, that's fun to say. And we'll catch up with you next time here on Vroom Vroom Veer.